Oh, good evening. It's Randy Ritchie here, Rockin' Randy. Or if you prefer, Jerry Fox, who used to do a lot of extra work for World Wrestling Entertainment. This is Women Wrestlers You Should Know in commemoration of Women's History Month. And today we're going to talk about, I'm going to talk about one, Sasha Banks. And let me tell you, a lot of people think I'm full of shit or trying to be big time when I say I don't watch much wrestling. And I don't watch much wrestling unless it pertains to me or if I'm looking for ideas. And I certainly don't go into the current wrestling because that's the biggest mistake the Indians make, the India companies and the India performers, is watching stuff that's already being done watching stuff and trying to act like their favorite WWE star, AEW star, or steal the lucha spots from Instagram that they see from Mexico. It's being done. They already have that. And speaking of that, Sasha Banks, uh, you know, when, when you do the Wikipedia on her, it talks about who she trained with and all that stuff. But I will guarantee you that she didn't learn shit on the indies because she broke into the business and within that same year she was in the WWE NXT developmental territory. Her father is the first cousin of rapper Snoop Dogg who helped develop her in-ring persona. She's also the first cousin of music producer Daz Dillinger and singers Brandy Norwood, and Ray J. So you see, she looked at sports entertainment, and that's what it is in 2023, if you want to make any money at it, is sports entertainment. You know, I used to have guys that I was training over to watch wrestling at my house on Sundays, And we wouldn't watch the current stuff. We'd watch the greats. And even Mike Tyson says, to become great, you must study the greats. So here's another thing, a little piece of information that the internet wrestling fan may not know. Okay, She grew up watching JWA, Japanese Women's Wrestling. Understand? She knows how to tell a story. She knows her size. She knows her shape. And not that she has limits, because she doesn't, obviously, because the girl is worth $5 million currently, okay? But she takes what she has, and she makes it her own. She may see something that she's inspired by, like Japanese women's wrestling, and makes it her own. She also has cited, and this makes even more sense, her favorite wrestler and inspiration was Eddie Guerrero, okay? And Eddie Guerrero, any wrestling company in the world would give their left nut for another Eddie Guerrero. So you see, she was already heads above anybody that claims they trained her. Sasha Banks, who's 30, signed with World Wrestling Entertainment in 2012, went on to become one of the most decorated female superstars in WWE history. In addition to competing in the first Iron Woman match and Women's Hell in a Cell match in WWE history, she's a five-time Raw Women's Champion, one-time SmackDown Women's Champion, one-time NXT Women's Champion, and three-time WWE Women's Tag Champion. She also headlined night one of WrestleMania 37 against Bianca Belair, which was the first one-on-one woman's main event in WrestleMania history. The boss has even become a crossover star by appearing in a hugely popular Star Wars Disney series, The Mandalorian, as Casca Reeves. You understand what I'm saying? She's a compelling storyteller. Her appearance is compelling. 
And when the woman cuts a promo, she is compelling, and the proof is in the pudding. I just read to you just some of her accomplishments, and she became so important. And in May of 2022, when her and her tag team partner walked off of a live television because they stood up to WWE creative, that was ballsy. That was something that should be revered. She didn't walk off like she was a a, a proud moron. Uh, I told you her net worth, and now she does have crossover fame, okay? She's going to be all right, and to be honest with you, more people should stand up to WWE Creative. For some reason, the writers there have more juice sometimes, or most of the time, than the talent does. And that's a shame, you know. When they screw up, they get second chances, you know. When the performer screws up, you got to mean one hell of a lot in that roster, you know, to keep that door open and be able to have the balls to walk off. Now, this is fact. CM Punk had his first handful of professional wrestling matches for myself. I helped break him in. I helped smarten him up, and I put him in positions as a young 18 or 19-year-old where he could learn something in the industry. And honestly, I was probably the first one in the wrestling industry, not the backyard where uh, all his the kids he was growing up with at the time liked to act like they're on the same level as him, but in real wrestling, okay? Here's what Punk had to say about Mercedes, Sasha Banks, and Trinity, Naomi, walking out. And I think it's fucking brilliant. Oh boy, people are going to be really fucking mad about this, but fuck it. Mercedes, Sasha Banks, and Trinity leave. They announce on SmackDown that, gosh darn, we are so disappointed in them. They really let our fans down. Then, my man's Punk goes on to say, Brock Splits comes back. Obviously, I think he worked this show. Where is Michael Cole saying Brock Lesnar really let these fans down? Everybody on the internet and these internet wrestling community gurus and website idiots and dirt sheet idiots, and I'm talking about Meltzer and Eric Bischoff, they think they know the skinny and they're just so smart to the business, but they're just not. You know, I saw somewhere that people actually believe Eric Bischoff actually knew the haps, what's going on behind the scenes at WWE when this happened. There's no way to fact check him, so he gets away with this fake news and some glorified way to hang on to mean something in the industry where at the end of the day, he's the biggest moron in the history of the industry because he was overspending so much that a... Cable television show that was drawing a 2.3 got canceled because of the money he was throwing around. And there was no way in God's green earth that the ends would justify the means and it wasn't worth it. You gotta be an idiot to do something like that and then come back however many years later and act like you really had something to do with something in the 83 weeks and all that bullshit. But anyway, I think this girl's a friggin'... A amazing performer, you know, the internet, and I still see this shit, that, oh, she doesn't do much in the ring, man. She can keep up with anybody. My company, Premier Pro Wrestling, our company, has a King of the Iron Man division. We actually have a King of the Iron Man champion, and we regularly have King of the Iron Man 30-minute matches. We even had 60-minute Iron Man matches. We do it because nobody can do it today in a compelling nature because you just end up seeing the same first 10 minutes three different times. Well, when it comes time for me to talk to my talent and put them into a situation like that, we are storytellers. We're not dance choreographers. But I'll say take some ideas from this match or that match, and they can't keep doing the same this match or that match So I start looking around for other matches, and I see a match. It was Shawn Michaels versus Kurt Angle when Kurt was healthy and Shawn was aging. At the end of the day, that was just the same match Shawn had 
with Bret Hart, however many years earlier, when they had an Iron Man match. And then I stumbled upon Bailey versus Sasha Banks. And you can go ahead and check for yourselves that woman's match at that time must have been fucking groundbreaking because it was more compelling, more entertaining, better story, and in a lot of ways probably more athletic than the match I cited, and that's no dig on Kurt Angle and Shawn Michaels. It just showed you two hungry, smart girls, smart young girls, trying to make their way in sports entertainment a predominantly male business or industry or sport. And they did one hell of a job of bringing out the best in each other. So that being said, Sasha is smart. Why should she cripple herself so a couple of guys or a handful of people that don't even really spend that much money on wrestling but love to shred it and love to be its harshest critics? They love it so much and they're so tough they have to use fake names bashing her, her what do you guys call it again? Give me a second. It's going to come to me in just a minute. Quote, end quote, we're great, man. You know? Uh, unbelievable. Now, that door was not closed. I will imagine that when it came to making decisions and negotiations in a publicly traded company, there's more than one person's thumbprint on that decision. There's more than one person's thumbprint on how much they're going to spend, especially when it comes to renegotiation. Well, now that Sasha has busted out into the mainstream, she warranted more money which she should. Why do you think that John Cena, you know, uh, doesn't work that much for World Wrestling Entertainment because he's making more in the mainstream? No, I'm not saying Sasha is as big a renowned outside of the ring star as John Cena, but she certainly is on her way. And remember, she's only 30 years old. So in the midst of this wait or this downtime, I'm sure she made another bright and calculated decision because she has resources, friends, family, and I've never heard anybody in the business or in the industry bury her, okay? She went ahead and she accepted, I'm sure, beyond lucrative deal with New Japan Pro Wrestling. And I've already seen these idiots, these internet wrestling community morons going out on a limb. They can't speak Japanese. They've never been to Japan. They don't live in Japan, saying that the Japanese fans are not happy with her entering up to this point. Man, step back and take a look at how they are marketing her. She is going to be ginormous under any name in Japan because they know who she is. And the Japanese public... The Japanese culture will always, always, always be tremendously influenced by our culture. Sasha Banks, as a female performer from 2012 till now, is a household name. To achieve that in today's industry, you have to be a strong woman, a smart woman, an athletic woman, and look at her aesthetically. She is gorgeous. An unbelievable storyteller and ad libber in the ring. When I watch her promos, when I watch her matches, she could work with anybody and cite reactions bigger than some of the biggest male stars in wrestling today. So, yes, I don't have a crush on her. I'm not physically like attracted to Sasha Banks. She's adorable. She's beautiful. I mean, yes, she's attractive, but what I'm trying to say is it's not my motivation for putting her over. My hopes is this. Number one, people get their heads out of their ass with this internet wrestling community. That wrestlers stop kissing the ass of the internet wrestling community because the internet wrestling community may like some of your posts, but they're certainly never going to support you financially. They usually don't buy merchandise. They usually find a way to scam 
pay-per-view, and they don't like to get uh, streaming services. They hate to spend money. They always find some sneaky way to do so, so they can bust on everything and anything that doesn't kiss their ass under a fake name and then brag to each other about what they said. And if uh, some idiot reacts to their stupid post or, you know, harsh criticism. Wrestling is a business, and if more people thought that way and knew that, like Miss Sasha Banks, this big logjam of India performers and India promoters would certainly, certainly make it easier for the cream to rise to the top if they would just take up, like I said before, uh, as a hobby, darts, bowling, or, you know what I mean, horseshoes. What's that other one with the bean bags? Cornhole? Why don't you guys go do something like that? You'll have more fun and you're probably better suited for it. But anyway, Sasha Banks, also the last thing I want to say, I guess this is current in regards to all this internet shit. And she's a smart girl because in that internet shit swirls around and it eventually is going to get into somebody's head. And when you're a publicly traded company like WWE, they're very concerned about their image. They're very concerned about who they deal with and who they hire. I know this firsthand because uh, one of the guys that I actually got hired, the deal became null and void because he had two minor assault charges that were supposed to be gone off his record but they still had him on record when he was 14 and 17 and they couldn't hire him until he got those things expunged, you know? So they're very concerned about that. But Miss Sasha, the brilliant girl that she is, went out there, not just one blanket tweet. She went on Twitter and thanked everybody at World Wrestling Entertainment, including and not limited to Triple H, Stephanie McMahon, and Vince McMahon. If you want to be great at something, okay, you have to look at the successful people like Sasha Banks and follow their road map. She loved wrestling, okay, number one. And then she reached out to people in the entertainment industry to help develop her persona. So she's got to be open-minded and she has to be humble to ask for help. And then she went to NXT and did what was asked of her, obviously, followed directions, became coachable if she wasn't. And she rose to the top at an amazing, amazing speed. I know guys that are knocking their heads into walls for the last 10 years in this business trying to invent some sort of secret high spot or entrance or move that's going to get him noticed. And that's not what you do. It's never going to happen. They're too smart today at World Wrestling Entertainment, you know. And uh, the thing is that you got to possess a mental, emotional, a spiritual, and you have to, you know, connections and, 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 and that it factor because they're going to find that out about you, you know. And you got to be humble and you have to understand what it means when a great one of the greatest boxing boxing champions of all times mike tyson says to be great you must study the greats not just watch the greats but study the greats and i'm sure 20 years from now everybody will still know who the hell sasha banks is and I think her future is brighter than ever because I think she's going to be able to work at New Japan and probably make similar money to what she's already used to. And since that is a on for a month, off for a month, on for a month, off for a couple months, she's going to be able to, 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 to use her talents, connections, and whatnot and also grow her uh, mainstream value you know, in Hollywood, television, ETC. All right, guys, I hope you guys are enjoying this, and I hope it helps at least one moron out there uh, get their shit together in this industry. This is Woman Wrestlers You Should Know. I'm Randy Ritchie, and this is being brought to you without commercials from YouTube. So please like, subscribe, and support Premier Pro Wrestling at the links in the description.